Good evening, everyone. We will now call our uh, December 14th St. Lucie County School Board meeting to order at 5 p.m. And we welcome each and every one of you that are here this evening. Uh, we look forward to a wonderful little break that we will be having uh, uh, after this meeting. But um, thank you so much for coming. Also, we speak to our uh, media and our channels there and the public who will hear these school board meetings. Thank you for tune tuning in and, uh, and listening and learning and growing with us. At this time, we are going to uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance directly after. I ask you to remain standing for the Kids at Hope uh, Treasure Hunters Pledge. remain standing. As an adult and treasure hunter, I am committed to search for all the talent, skills, and intelligence that exist in all children and youth. I believe all children are capable of success, no exceptions. You may be seated. We're going to, st we're going to start our meeting with our public hearing. It is the proposed approval of resolution to change School board member resident areas, in other words, known as districts. And uh, before uh, we uh, entertain comments from the community, if there be any, uh, I'm going to give a brief description on uh, the uh, item proposed here. Florida state statutes requires that school board member resident areas shall as nearly as practical, be equal in population. The districts are at large voting by the entire county's registered voters. The 2020 decennial census data shows us that the current districts are no longer equal. On September the 14th, 2021, the school board held a regular meeting during which it was brief by the school board attorney, Dan Harrell, about the requirements and the history of updating the member resident areas. At that meeting, the school board directed their staff to work with the St. Lucie County with the intent, as in the past, to adopt the same districts for the school board as the St. Lucie Board of County Commissioners. A copy of Mr. Harrell's August 9th, 2021 referendum uh, regarding the redistricting is attached to the agenda item. On September 14th, 2021, the St. Lucie uh, Board of County Commissioners met in an informal meeting workshop and reviewed the five scenarios prepared by their staff. At that meeting, the St. Lucie Board of County Commissioners decided to move forward by looking at three different maps. These are three different map options with the following criteria. Number one, keep all BOCC member residences within the new district. Number two, assure that all school board member residents are within their new district boundaries. And number three, try and keep neighborhoods within the same member district. Number four, keep the city of Fort Pierce majority district with the one BOCC member with the majority of Fort Pierce encompassing the district. So attach, we board members, we all have a maps that are result that are the result of the BOCC direction. All of the school board members are within the new respective districts. At this time, we are going to open this part of our board meeting to the public for uh, uh, any comments that you may have regarding redistricting. 
If you have any comments, you may come to the podium at this time. Okay, seeing none, we are going to ask, now earlier today we had our workshop and we discussed very thoroughly uh, the um, redistricting options. And so we are ready to take a vote on this. We are going to start out with asking the superintendent for his recommendation. Board members, we, if you have, uh, want to move on that or you have another motion that you want to make, it would be done at this time. Uh, bef so we're gonna open up with asking for uh, superintendent's recommendation. I would recommend that the board adopt, uh, based upon the information today, scenario two. Okay, board members, can we have a uh, motion and a second? So moved. Second. So moved by Dr. Ingersoll, I mean, Mr. Ingersoll, and uh, by Ms. Harley, second. Okay, at this time, we open up for any discussion, if there's any further discussion that's necessary. Otherwise, we know that we had a very thorough conversation on this, and we can be ready for the vote. All right, at this time we will uh, bring the vote up. And all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, vote carries, 5-0. So moved and, and uh, uh, the vote has been carried. So thank you so much. Uh, we're gonna go right on now to number three on our agenda, which is school special orders of businesses. Uh, Mr. Gent, would you please lead us in that? Thank you, Dr. Mills. I'd like to call on Dr. Kevin Perry or Lydia Martin. Who's first? At this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Kevin okay. Perry to the podium to share information with you about the Principal and Assistant Principal of the Year Awards, followed by a brief presentation about the Art in the Capital competition. <laughs> Madam Chair, School Board Member, Superintendent Gent, it is my distinct honor and privilege to present St. Lucie County's representatives for the 2021-2022 Outstanding Assistant Principal Achievement Award and Principal Achievement Award for Outstanding Leadership. The Principal Achievement Award for Outstanding Leadership honors the contribution of an elite group of school administrators for their contributions to Florida students, schools, and communities. The program honors outstanding principals who have established challenging, creative, and engaging learning environments. She has proven herself to be a highly effective school-based administrator who has a record of turnaround success. She is also an inspirational leader who affects positive change in culture as well as instruction. This is evidenced by her current school's one-year improvement by 120 points from a D to a C, even in the time of a pandemic. In addition, this is evidence that in one year, her school moved out of DA status. She also sets the highest standards for implementing the continuous improvement model to meet all academic and social needs of her community. Integrity, trust, competence, and collaboration coupled with proven data-driven academic discussions, motivates and inspires teachers, students, and parents to do and be their very best. Her non-no-sense, student-centered, time-on-task approach makes her school a haven for academic success. It was a joy to see her look at the, the superintendent when he suggested that my, we might interrupt instruction to make this announcement to her school. Described as one of the hardest working principals in St. Lucie Public Schools, armed with a bright smile and a laugh that is infectious, please welcome St. Lucie Public Schools Outstanding Achievement Award Principal of the Year, Principal Felicia Nixon. Thank you. Board member, let's go down, please.
Good evening, board members. Thank you for this great opportunity. Good, good evening, Superintendent Gent, and to our cabinet members. It really is an honor to be selected to represent this great district as the principal of the year. And um, I just want you to know that I'm so proud and so honored to lead Longwood Elementary. Every day, I believe I work with some of the best professionals and the students and the parents of Longwood. They, they motivate me and I'm just, just a servant leader, but I'm so excited about this opportunity to lead and serve in our great district. And thank you again for this opportunity and for this recognition. Thank you, Dr. Perry. Okay, just shake everybody's hand. The Outstanding Assistant Principal Award recognizes outstanding assistant principals for their contributions to their school and communities. The program honors assistant principals that have also established partnerships with parents and community members. She has built her leadership credentials on the foundation of positive relationships and well-earned trust from those with whom she works. Her leadership in curriculum is respected and appreciated as she endeavors to maintain a culture of professional learning and implementation. She is supportive to her team and provides feedback as she coaches others to be their very best. Finally, the results of her efforts and respect of her colleagues are testament to her skills. Please welcome the Outstanding Assistant Principal of the Year, Mrs. Jacqueline Lee. Good evening, school board members, Superintendent Gent. Thank you so much for this honor. Um, it was really, truly a surprise to me, but um, I, I just want you to know, it's already been a tremendous learning experience for me um, with my submission to the state, and I hope to represent St. Lucie County Schools and all of our assistant principals here very well. Thank you again. Madam Chair, school board members and Superintendent Gent, I am pleased to speak to you again with the recognition of the Arts in the Capitol 2021 Award. While some believe that the arts are extracurricular activities, St. Lucie Public Schools believe just the opposite. To further support the importance of the arts, House Bill 701 related to the Art in the Capitol competition was signed into legislation in 2016. The Art in the Capital competition is a statewide visual arts competition that requires each school district to annually hold an art competition for students in grades six through eight. The winning selection comes from each district and is given to our legislator and we will reside on exhibit at the state capitol during the entire time of the legislative session. Honorable mention goes to Michaela Grisby, seventh grade student at Palm Point and Shelby Wessel, sixth grade student 
at Palm Point, and Carlos Rivas, seventh grade student at CAS. But we are pleased to ask our representative Tabosi to join our board members as we present to you the first place selection that will be exhi on exhibit at the State Capitol, the artwork of Zion Dobson, eighth grade student from Westgate K-8 school. It moved again, Lydia. It wasn't me. Thank you, Madam Chair, Superintendent Jen, and board members, and thanks for letting me hug it out with you guys. You know I'm a hugger, not a shaker, so thank you. And I appreciate you keeping art alive in St. Lucie County. Last year was really special when we took art to the Capitol. We had the opportunity to take a lot of artwork to the Capitol from St. Lucie County, and I decorated my whole office with it. Um, this piece of artwork will not only be in the walls for everyone to see on display, but we're going to do the same thing we did last year. We're going to take it everywhere we go. So we took St. Lucie County artwork to committees. We took it into session. We got pictures with our sergeant. We gave, we gave the students pictures of their artwork all around the Capitol when we came back. And we're, we're looking forward to, to doing that again and encouraging our students to uh, pursue um, thought through art. So thank you very much. And uh, because I have the opportunity and it is the Christmas season, I just want to tell you that this year I'm so thankful for you. Um, over this past 12 months that we've served together, I've had just a great experience with St. Lucie County School Board. You've been welcoming, you've been open, you've um, answered so many questions and so many phone calls. And I just want to let you know that I am so proud of the work that you do. I'm so proud to call St. Lucie County home, and I'm so proud that you are our school board. Thank you, I'm grateful. At this time, we'd like to take a moment for a special recognition of our very own 2021 graduate of Lincoln Park Academy, Ms. Brianna Miles, who is the newly named Miss Teen USA. And she is joining us, so you please come forward. Mr. Jen, did you wanna say a few words? Yes, um, well, we, we have some photos here and we're gonna show you a video Brianna, uh, when, when Brianna won this, this is uh, Teen USA, and even though she graduated at LPA, her mom is here, her mother's a counselor over at uh, um, Lincoln Park Academy, and this is just a great, great feather in St. Lucie County's hat, and I had the opportunity to meet you at the school about a year ago and have my picture taken with Brianna. I think that helped her through this, <laughs> through this process. Um, I, I hope it did, and uh, so I'm, I'm able to do that for the next candidate as well, but um, this is a fantastic honor for you. You want to say a couple of words, and then we're going to show a video for you, Brianna. Okay. Well, hello, everyone, and thank you so much for having me. Uh, I want to say a special thank you to my god mom, Miss Woolard, and also to my former principals, um, Mr. Santa Bria and um, Miss Stone. Um, thank you guys for having me. This is such an amazing opportunity to be able to be here to not only represent the USA, but also Florida and St. Lucie County in this endeavor. So thank you so much. One of these five young women is about to be crowned the next Miss Teen USA and have her life changed forever. The fourth runner-up is Utah!
The third runner-up is... Pennsylvania! The second runner-up is... Texas! And then there were two. If for any reason the new Miss Teen USA cannot fulfill her duties, the first runner-up will take over. Good luck to you both. And the winner of Miss Teen USA 2021 is... Florida! We're gonna move right along with our special thanks and recognition, our Star Awards. Yes, thank you. And we have some amazing employees to recognize, um, true heroes tonight on our agenda. First, we're gonna start with uh, Louis Rios. He is a site maintenance worker at Port St. Lucie High School, and he was nominated by Rob Diamato. Many of you know him, he's one of our project managers. Rob's son, Nick, was attending a football game at Port St. Lucie High School when Nick began choking on a water bottle cap that became lodged in his throat. At this point in time, the custodians were cleaning up and emptying the trash and noticed Nick in distress. Um, Lewis did not hesitate and immediately administered the Heimlich maneuver and was able to get Nick breathing again. He was rushed to the emergency room since the item was still lodged in his throat, but Lewis's swift actions made it possible for Nick to breathe while being transported to the hospital. 
and gave hospital staff an opportunity to dislodge the bottle cap. Lewis is a true, true hero and we're happy to recognize him tonight. Another group of amazing individuals would like to recognize Renata Blackburn, food service assistant, Cynthia Deckel, cafeteria manager, and Yvonne Suarez, the bookkeeper at Manatee Academy. These individuals were nominated by Principal Lily Beauchamp. Mrs. Blackburn noticed a student choking in the cafeteria line and called over Ms. Deckel and Ms. Suarez. Ms. Suarez performed the Heimlich maneuver, which dislodged a fruit roll-up from, from the student's throat. All three are commended for their quick and calm response to assist a student in severe distress. So we appreciate them once again for stepping forward. Finally, we have two amazing individuals from the Office of Teaching and Learning, Dr. Mary Hefstetter, who is the Early Childhood Coordinator, and Cassie Velasquez, um, who is the VPK Program Specialist. These individuals were, no were nominated by Principal Brad Lehman from Village Green. When a VPK classroom found themselves without a teacher, Dr. Mary Hefstetter and Cassie Velasquez jumped into action to serve as temporary teachers while a permanent teacher could be found. They provided a smooth transition as well as ensured that quality instruction continued. Village Green is forever grateful for their support. So congratulations to all of our star recipients for this evening. Okay, we're gonna move right along to our next agenda item, which is the ESOL report. I don't believe um, Mr. David Freeman is here and is their representative. I did not think there would be a representative, but I wanted to make room for you. Uh, David, the, um, the president of the uh, ESOL, of the ESO uh, committee, he sends his best wishes to everyone uh, he couldn't make it this evening, but he's wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. And he says that we have all tackled a lot of hurdles and we need to enjoy our break. So he has nothing but good news for us. And he's, he's saying Merry Christmas. He says we all need a break. So if it isn't bleeding, broken, or on fire, it can wait until we return. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. We appreciate that message. Okay, do we have anyone here from our, to give our CWA report? Okay, we do not, so we're gonna move right along, and I know that we do have our St. Lucie Public School Youth Advisory Council here, represented by Mr. Christian Baca. And welcome, Mr. Baca. We always are so pleased to see you come and give us a report, and we anticipate this one. We know that I believe the first time uh, that you've been able to meet with all of the high schools and come together, so we're anticipating that report. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair, school board members, and Superintendent Gent. Um, foremost, the inaugural meeting of the St. Lucie Public Schools Youth Advisory Council was held on November 16th um, here at the, at the school board office, and school board member Holly sworn in our inaugural cohort of Youth Advisory Council members. Additionally, we established council meeting norms and developed a preliminary agenda of the concerns the council will address throughout the year. Um, council members identified concerns such as access to mental health resources, student attendance, environmental sustainability, and student administration communication. We were also joined by Superintendent Gent, who spoke of the importance of, the developing, of our, the developing our leadership skills and emphasized that the goal of being a leader is to advance the team and that leadership is an action, not position. Additionally, St. Lucie Public Schools, uh, St. Lucie Public Schools attorney, Mr. Ferguson, provided council members a presentation on Florida's government and the Sunshine Law. Our December meeting held at Fort Pierce Westwood um, Academy on December 7th, and so since our last school board meeting, I, we've had two meetings. And at this meeting, we began our discussion of district-wide issues facing our student body. One of the most beneficial aspects of the Youth Advisory Council is that the problems within one school may be met with the solutions from another school. And so, uh, fostering the collaborative environment of the Youth Advisory Council, we were able to address the needs of students to the sh uh, through the shared development 
of district-wide solutions. Uh, we discuss issues such as transportation and student awareness of student resources and services. Further, Chief Academic Officer Dr. Wild prov provided council members a presentation on the St. Lucie Public Schools Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief SR3 fund proposal. One of our council members, Council Member Daniel, uh, Tyler Daniels, from a, uh, a junior at Lincoln Park Academy proposed the inclusion of water bottle filling stations at water fountains to reduce the spread of COVID-19 through traditional water fountains, also keeping our students hydrated and promoting sustainable practices within our schools. Um, Chief Academic Officer Dr. Wild and Chief Operating Officer Mr. O'Leary have since included um, Council Member Daniel's suggestion within the District SR3 fund proposal. This is only one of many instances in which our council, council members have successfully advocated for the needs of our students. This accomplishment set, set forth um, the momentum at which our council will operate as we actively contribute to the district-wide decisions. Moreover, with the help of Chief Communications Officer Ms. Martin and her team, our council has adopted our official logo for the St. Lucie Public Schools Youth Advisory Council. This logo symbolically captures the diversity of our student body and our council's commitment to recognizing student voice by providing uh, students a platform to share their concerns. In our upcoming meeting in January, uh, we hope to, to discuss the promotion of sustainable practices within our schools. We hope to um, discuss the streamlining of college application process for our students and increasing awareness of on-campus food pantries and assisting um, the fulfillment of student needs. Lastly, yesterday, council members attended the District Advisory Council meeting where we discussed element, the SR3 funds and served as active contributors in the assessment of student needs and allocation of, of district funds. As always, thank you to the school board for, for the opportunity to speak. We look forward to continuing to represent the interests of our student body and addressing those needs. We look forward to the possibilities. Thank you. And we look forward to the possibilities as well. Thank you so much, Mr. Baca. Thank you. It's good to hear, uh, aside from our students and uh, what they're thinking and, and what their needs are. So again, we thank you, Mr. Backer, for being so diligent here at the meetings. Uh, now, we're gonna go right to our consent agenda. The adoption of our consent agenda. Uh, Mr. Gent, may I have, uh, may you give a recommendation to us? Recommend the board approve the consent agenda as submitted. Okay. So moved. So moved by Mr. Second. Ingersoll. Second. Second by Mr. Uh, Kelly. Uh, any discussions? Any to one uh, item? Remove any item for any discussion. Seeing none, we're going to move right along for our vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. You sure? <laughs> any opposed? Motion carries 5-0 then, okay. Um, okay, uh, super, time for our superintendent and staff reports on selected topics. Thank you, Dr. Mills. Um, first off, I would like to recognize um, Dr. Jonathan Ferguson. This is his last School board meeting, he is retiring. I believe his last day is Friday the 17th, and we wanna wish him the best. He, uh, we, we had a little cake yesterday. Is there any of that cake left over? Um, there is some, we had some cake yesterday, and he's gonna be heading up to Cedar Key and, uh, and doing some different things, and so we appreciate what he's done, and we're going to miss him. Jonathan, I didn't know if you wanted to say anything, or he didn't wanna say anything at the principal's meeting, so. Um, it's unusual for an attorney not to want to say much, so that's great. And, uh, but I do appreciate what he's done. He's given us good legal advice. He's helped our school centers. Our principals knew from our legal department just a phone call away, and he has served us very, very well. So thank you and congratulations to him on his retirement. And also uh, tonight, the board approved uh, Ms. Heather Clark. Heather is going to step in for, or not step in, but is going to, um, when he retires, when Bill Bill's going to retire, Bill uh, Tomlinson, will retire at the end of June, and because of the uh, complex and the complexities of that position itself, which is probably one of the most, if not the most difficult position in the school district, 
Um, I thought it was going to be good that we recognize, and um, I um, appoint, uh, recommend somebody to the board right now, Heather. Heather, come on up uh, to Shadow Bill. She'll Shadow Bill and work with him. She has a real intricate knowledge of ESC and what happens, and uh, so she'll be working closely with him so that we can have a very, very seamless and smooth transition um, when Bill does leave us at the end of June. So, uh, Heather, congratulations, and the floor is yours. Thank you so much, and I will keep this very brief. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Superintendent Gent. Thank you for the opportunity to come before you this evening. I'm gonna go back a little bit um, to 1999, and as I said, I'm gonna keep it brief, but when I joined St. Lucie Public Schools in 1999 as an exceptional student education teacher, I didn't have these glasses. <laughs> um, I was confident uh, that I had made the right decision joining Lawnwood Elementary and that it was a special place. It was very early in my career and I came from a rural district in Florida. As a teacher of students with disabilities, I knew that my students deserved every opportunity to be included in classrooms with their non-disabled peers and to receive the same high quality education. Quickly, I learned that St. Lucie was progressive in their practices, and at that time, they were one of the few districts in the state of Florida partnering with the Florida Inclusion Network to ensure that schools were providing a continuum of services for the students with disabilities. I was very curious about who was helping to lead that work in our district, and that's when I met Mr. Bill Tomlinson. Fast forward. Over 20 years later, under Mr. Tomlinson's leadership, with the support of the board and Superintendent Gent, St. Lucie Public Schools Division of ESC and Student Services has become a premier division in the state of Florida. Just this last year, 91.6% of our students with disabilities graduated with a high school diploma. That's the top tier in our state. But it is more than percentages. Students in our district have been provided opportunities and access to services, now I'm gonna get emotional, that have changed the trajectory of their lives. Ranging from meaningful classroom instruction with related supports, services to address their social, emotional, behavioral, mental, and physical health. And in addition, many of these students have participated in programs that have prepared them for competitive employment and independent living beyond high school. There are big, huge <laughs> shoes to fill with Mr. Tomlinson's upcoming retirement in June, and it is not lost on me the enormous responsibility and that care must be taken to ensure that our most vulnerable students have equitable opportunities and positive outcomes for the future. I am humbled and I am grateful for the opportunity to, con to continue the vision that Mr. Tomlinson and his team have established. And I thank you for trusting me to serve our students, our schools, our families, and our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Ferguson, uh, we thank you for your service here with St. Lucie County Public Schools, and thank you so much for um, the tremendous work that you've done while you were here. We're Doc, Dr. Mills, I just have a couple other things. Okay. Uh, um, I'll skip some of them. I just want to um, share really that, um, you know, we've, Treasure Coast High School made the, their football team made the final four, and um, we had an opportunity uh, Troy was there, Jack was there, uh, to watch the game a couple of weeks ago. And just to see the, the stands were packed, the band was unbelievable, the cheerleaders, the, how, even though we didn't win the game, the, how they represented St. Lucie County, um, uh, and the, uh, even the opposing side, I had some comments from them on, on the Treasure Coast and uh, the, the, the area itself and the hidden gem it was. Dr. Prince was on the uh, radio at halftime with a Orlando station, and I had the opportunity to talk uh, on WPSL and really, uh, they were just amazed at what was going on in their school, school district, uh, the leadership, the leadership of the board, and it was a great, great night, even in defeat. Um, it's what, uh, you know, conference of high schools are all about, and, uh, you know, I was very, very proud of them at that. And um, this will be our last meeting until the new year, so from the Gent household to everyone, just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, 
and, uh, and a prosperous new year and look forward to uh, everybody taking off on Friday. I always tell my teachers when I was a principal, don't beat the school buses out and uh, then we'll uh, enjoy um, a couple of, of weeks of well-deserved rest and, uh, and to, uh, to share in the holiday season and the excitement that goes along with this and then look forward to coming back uh, renewed and ready to go for the second half of the school year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gent. Our attorney's report. Thank you, Chair, members of the board and superintendent. There is no report tonight. I'd also like to wish you all a happy holiday. Thank you so much. School board members report. We'll start with Mr. Ingersoll. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we voted on our contract between ESOL, C CTA, and the district. I just want to thank Dr. Weil and our district staff for working that through and uh, letting everyone have a good holiday knowing we have a ratified contract. That's awesome. Uh, Mama Mia, the tickets are still available if you're interested. That is a play that Port St. Lucie High School puts on. They are quickly selling out, so I would not like, I want everyone to go because it is going to be a great opportunity. It's the first time they perform in almost two years, so it's good to see the kids back. And I just want to wish everyone a happy holidays and a Merry Christmas. Thank you, Mr. Ingersoll. Ms. Hawley? It has been a an extremely busy month, um, and I've appreciated all the opportunities I've had to be in your schools and witness what's going on there. A special shout out again to Treasure Coast High School. I attended their winter concert Friday night, and it was superb. Um, it just even got to see Dr. Perry lead the band for a bit, so it was a, a really phenomenal night. Um, all the plays and programs have been wonderful doing such great things in our schools, and I appreciate it so very much. And from myself and my family, happy holidays to all of you. Thank you, Ms. Hawley. Mr. Kelly. Yes, I also want to thank our negotiating teams on both sides for uh, giving us a present here at the end of the year. Great job, I know it's a lot of work, and uh, everybody did the best they could, so congratulations on that. And Treasure Coast High School football team, but at that game, I, it was like being at the Super Bowl for me. I hadn't been in a game like that in many years. But I want to tell you that I am so proud of Treasure Coast High School. I just, the band, the, the kids, I mean, so professional, the team itself, the way they went through that little tunnel in the beginning. And uh, my, my, my goodness, I understand we were sold out of hot dogs though by halftime. So, but uh, <laughs> so proud of the top four. And the big thing, was the, the week before, I think it was, Wayne, correct me, but we beat the West Palm Beach, didn't we? I mean, that school's twice. I, I can attest to that, because I was at that game. You were at that I game. I was at that, the game oh, in Palm you, Beach. You know yes. what I mean, but I mean, what, uh, impressive, great. I bet they didn't run out of hot dogs then. Yeah, yeah, I'll bet you they did. <laughs> but it was great to beat Palm Beach. Uh, <laughs> it was wonderful, make to the final four, but we'll look forward to it again next year. And uh, other than that, I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, uh, Hope you had a happy Hanukkah, all the happy holidays. Uh, hug your children, get your vaccine shots, and have a great, great time off. Teachers, you deserve it. Take your time off, and I hope you get everything you want from Santa Claus. Thank you, Mr. Kelly and Ms. Richardson. Thank you, Doctor. Madam Chairman. Um, so I had the opportunity to go with a few of our school board members to um, to congratulate our school-related employee finalists and, um, and also the outstanding first-year teachers. And one of the things that stood out to me was, well, a couple of things. Um, the teachers themselves, these are amazing, amazing human beings. And, um, and just, I, I mean, you just want to hug and love on them because they're just amazing. And the kids in the classroom, oh my God, Mr. Gent asked one word, one word would you use to describe your teacher? And I think the number one word was amazing. I got beautiful, I got happy, I got, you know, just all these, these words that they used and he didn't have to prod or pry, he asked and the hands went up. The hands went up and they had these uh, one word to describe their teachers. So I'm saying, teachers, you are awesome. You are amazing. You are wonderful. Beautiful was another word, you know? They, they just, I mean, love, love, love their teachers. That's what I got from 
being around these kids and just what they think of their teachers. So teachers, if you don't hear it every day, hear it today, you are amazing. So that was what I got. Not only that, but Mr. Gent went on, he was HR for us. He was handing out job invitations. We got, oh, who wants to be teachers? You know, and so he was, the promise is a promise, and you know, so he, we have future teachers already lined up for the next, in about 11 years. When they graduate, it's on film, it's on tape, so that they can hold him to it. And he told them, hold me to it, you know? So that was amazing as well. I was just excited to be out and, you know, to see, you know, just the great things that are happening just right there in our schools. And in, in, even in this time, you know, when we have all of what's going on, you know, there are still positive things going on in our school. You don't hear it, but there are a lot of more positive than actually, I believe, negative. You know, so we just need to encapsulate all of those things and bring them back and start looking, concentrated on positivity as opposed to negativity. Having said um, all of that, I would like to recognize in our audience today, my daughter, Bethany, she's here. So uh, Bethany, could you just wave? <laughs> she's here and um, to support, you know, everything that we are doing here in the district, but to support her mom. And as everybody else, I want to say from my family, from Bethany and I, my family to your family, Merry Christmas, a happy, blessed, healthy, safe New Year. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Richardson. And hello, Bethany. Glad that you were able <laughs> to come and be a part of the school board meeting this evening. Okay, board members, we need to do a citizen advisory committee appointee this evening. Um, we do have a vacancy as a result. Well, let me just go through a little description of what the citizen advisory appointee is all about. Uh, appointee membership consists of seven individuals. Each school board member shall appoint one representative. One at large representative shall be appointed by school board majority vote. One representative shall be appointed by the CTACU union. No committee representative shall be an elected, elected, elected official, a union officer, a school district employee, or a union member. Committee vacancy shall be filled as soon as practical, but in no event more than 90 days from the date of the vacancy. In terms of each Committee members shall coincide with terms as set forth in the attached resolution B that was adopted by the board on June 11, 2019. So we have school board member um, Jack Kelly's appointee, Mr. Doug Barber, was moved, has moved out of the area. Consequently, Mr. Kelly is appointing Mr. Gary Wilson to the uh, Citizen Advisory Committee. All other committee uh, positions are filled at this time. What we want to do at this is call at this time is call for a vote to accept to approve uh, Mr. Kelly's uh, appointee, Mr. Gary Wilson, to represent him on the Citizen Advisory Committee. So, may I have a vote in a second, please? So moved by Ms. Harley, second by Mr. Ingersoll. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Okay, we're at that time now for our scheduled speakers. Our scheduled speakers, um, we do give you five minutes. Uh, and we um, have our attorney that will keep uh, you at pace for those five minutes and she'll let you know when you have about 15 seconds left so you can wrap up at that time. Uh, when you come to the podium, please give your name and your address for the record. And we're gonna start out with Ms. Dale Galliano. Welcome, Ms. Galliano. I'm Dale Galliano from Port St. Lucie. Quote, 
page 291. I totally wanted to pop your cherry, but you're first virgin. And you'll probably be me my last, because sorry, but virgin sex isn't very good. Quote, page 268. So I'll go find a sponsor, some old Viagra stiff queen, hopefully, that buying a drink means buying a lay. Page 300, quote, down my shorts in a single swift move. He was on me, in me, humiliating me in every way. This is from the book named Tricks, about five teenagers, 15 and 16 years old, that are making life decisions which get them into the lives of prostitution, drug and alcohol abuse, and addiction, stripping for cash, pedophilia, pregnancy, dying from STDs, physical and mental abuse, forced homosexuality, gambling, rape, plus anti-religion. Surprisingly, I wasn't able to find this book in our county public libraries. It has been challenged and banned throughout the country every year since it was published in 2009. That's 12 years, yet you and St. Lucie County Board have this book in the St. Lucie West, Port St. Lucie High Schools, Lincoln Park Academy, Fort Pierce Westwood Academy, which is K-12, to giving this book access to 14,211 kids. We, the voting public, know that this board makes up its own rules and policies and procedures to fit their personal agendas, egos, procedures to fit their personal agendas, and collect our tax dollar paychecks. Two words that your media specialist handbook come to mind is review, formal assessment and examination of something with the possibility or intention of instituting change if necessary. Second word is ban, to officially or legally prohibit. Last month, my First Amendment rights were taken away because of the bluest eye. It was pulled for review and not banned. I was told it was banned, but it has yet to this date, I have not received notice that it has been banned. The parents and people of St. Lucie County need to know what you are reviewing until the officially banned. From your own school board policy manual, chapter four in curriculum, it says that the standards to determine the propriety of educational materials shall be pursuant to the Florida statute. 22 books in our school break the stat Florida statutes and additionally our Florida Constitution. Breaking these statutes and laws is a third degree felony. That could warrant jail time. This coming election year with our state legislation session coming in on January 11th, there are going to be many major changes. Times have changed and so has the need for better enforceable laws, candidates, and people who are responsible for our children and community. So who is responsible for these books? Teachers, social media specialists, principals, or is it you, the elected official, that we put into office to look after the well-being of what we value the most, our children? I know that you know about these books because I've been here since September telling you about them. And your department has had the info on these books ever since they were delivered to the 18 schools that they're in. And why 18 and not all 58? Is there a test possibly for indoctrination somewhere along the line that's going to be done? I've come here quoting the filth and garbage that has been destroying the minds and futures of our children and yet you sit mildly upset with the quotes, but do nothing. Shame on you. Remove all of these books now because you can. 2 Corinthians 5.10, for all of us must appear before Christ to be judged by him. We will each receive what we deserve according to everything that we have done, good and bad, in the body of our life. How will you be answering this? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Galliano. Uh, our next speaker is Mr. Eddie Evans. Miss Eddie Evans? Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am, you do have five minutes. And uh, please give your name and your address for the records. My name is Eddie Evans, and I live in Port St. Lucie. Uh, my book is 
and Tango Makes Three. It's by Justin Richardson. It's a children's book in a large cartoon format. Beautifully drawn, pictures and drawings that are inviting to small children and very deceptive to adults. But cute doesn't make it even legal. This book was published in 2005 and started in 2006, has been banned eight times through 2017. The challenged, it's been challenged more than any other book for three years in a row. It continues to be questioned and challenged until 2020 and still remains on the banned list in 2021. Now, how long has this book been in our schools? At present, there are four books in our school system, Manatee Academy, Oak Hammock, and Palm Point. All of them are kindergarten to eighth grade involving 4,238 students. Now, this raises some questions. What books go to what schools and why? Who and how is it decided? And who's involved in making these decisions? The, per the paperwork to challenge a book is very extensive and intimidating. Too many, it's for many pages of paperwork and things to fill out. Are, the, are there records on file of each of the books that would help us you know, decide that and fill out the forms? And are, they, are these records accessible? According to your board policy manual, Criteria for the selection of materials. 2A, the standards to determine the propriety of the educational materials shall be pursuant to Florida statutes. How do these pornography books pass this process in, in this first place? The 22 books on the illegal list should be pulled from the schools and the media centers. Our youth of today are suffering from so many problems, depression and suicide, and these kind of books are not helping their mental health. Thank you, Ms. Evans. Ms. Susan DeSeno, please come to the podium. Good evening. My name is Susan Cedeno, and I reside in Port St. Lucie. I've been a Port St. Lucie resident since 1991. I have two sons, 41 and 39, that attended and graduated from St. Lucie schools in 1998 and 2001. I am a firm believer that as a parent, you cannot just blame the school system for falling grades. As parents, we have an important role to, to stay engaged in our children's education. I did it then with my sons and now with my granddaughters. In the 30 years I have lived in this county, this is the first time I am addressing the school board. I have always had faith and trusted the people that the citizens of St. Lucie County elected to be in charge of our children. I was confident that they would always have the children's best interests as a priority and would do everything possible to keep them out of harm's way. I am here today as a grandmother and a very concerned citizen because I now believe that that is no longer the case. I cannot believe what I am now seeing in our schools, pornography. Yes, pornography in our schools. I am appalled to know that this trash is allowed into our schools. We have entrusted our most precious commodities in your hands to mold and protect, and this is what you are allowing into our schools. Tonight I'm going to give you some highlights about one book out of many that are in our schools. Books that my granddaughters and other children have access to. 20,496 children aged 5 through 18 have access to this smut, and this is just one book. David Levithon is the author of this book. It's called Two Kissing Boys. This book is available to children in Port St. Lucie High School, St. Lucie West Centennial High School, Lincoln Park Academy, and Manatee Elementary School. These are quotes I'm going to read from the book exactly as they're written in the book. I am dead. I am already. Uh, you know, we. I think what's happening right now is that we really want you to be careful about what's in these books as far as reading directly from the book. But we do appreciate you bringing these books to our attention 
and we have pulled them off of the off of the shelves and for review as well, the books that you mentioned. Well, that's what I'm told, so I will double check on that because you're saying no, we have it. But that is what has come to me as a board member, that the books are being reviewed. And um, again, we're, on, we're all on the same side when it comes to our children. And so um, it's not a point that we want to be well, she can, you can go on, ma'am, but I, I do appreciate everything you set up to this point. Go ahead, go ahead and continue what, in, you know, respect. Yes, ma'am, we're listening to you. Go ahead. Long term relationship oriented. Cooper writes back, how long term do you think these relationships are? Two or three? If you want to find a husband, maybe you should stop looking for someone, and I'm not gonna bleep, I'll bleep that out. This is promoting sex between a minor and adult. Quote, there are moments where Harry is so revved up, he is so, that he'd sleep with just about anything. This is a suggestion of bestiality. Throughout the 200-page novel of the WE program represents the AIDS community from a generation ago. The book parallels two minor boys wanting to win the longest kiss for Guinness, record, Guinness's book of records and Greek choruses of adult men dying from age. This book features transgenders, gay men, teams, teens, victims of hate crime, love interest, isolation, anger, trolling, sex online, running away from, I can't even say some of these words. I don't feel comfortable repeating them. Running away from home, lying to parents, having adult with a sex, child sex, and death. It does not bring back the 12-year-old who put a gun to his head, or the 14-year-old who hung himself, or the 19-year-old strung up on the side of an empty highway. 15 seconds remaining. St. Lucie County, St. Lucie County School Board must remove all these evil books. You all know better than to allow this filth to be read by our ch and your children and grandchildren. Where are your moral standards? Why That's are five we minutes. fighting? Thank you. Why are we fighting us who want these books banned for good? We know our motive. What are yours? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Smith. No. Okay, Teresa Hall. Teresa Hall, Port St. Lucie, Florida. Florida ranks third in the United States in human trafficking cases reported, third in the nation. This is criminal and unacceptable. We face a battle that exists in our homes, public spaces that our children occupy, and apparently now in our school systems. Florida Constitution, Section 8, Public Education. The education of our children is a fundamental value of the people of the state of Florida. It is therefore a paramount duty of the state to make adequate provision for the education of all children residing in its borders. Adequate provision shall be made by law for a uniform, efficient, safe, secure, and high quality system of free public schools. What is the definition of safe? It's free from danger of any kind, free from hurt, injury, or damage, conferring safety, securing from harm, not exposing to danger, and no longer dangerous. Florida Statute 847.001, child pornography means any image depicting a minor engaged in sexual conduct. Harmful to minors means any reproduction, imitation, characterization, description, exhibition, presentation, or representation of whatever kind of form depicting nudity, sexual conduct, or sexual excitement. Florida Statute 847012, any picture, photograph, drawing, or similar visual representation or image of a person or portion of the human body which depicts nudity or sexual conduct. Any person violating any provision of this section commits a felony to the third degree. 
Florida Constitution, marriage defined. Inasmuch as marriage is a legal union of only one man and one woman as husband and wife, no other legal union that is treated as marriage or the substantial equivalent there shall be valid or recognized. The Florida Constitution, Ethics and Government, a public office is a public trust. The people shall have the right to secure and sustain that trust against abuse. Ignoring the urgency to remove these pornographic materials from our schools is an abuse of power. The Florida Constitution public officers, each state and county officer before entering upon the duties of the office, shall give bond as required by law and shall swear and affirm, quote, I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States and of the state of Florida, that I am duly qualified to hold office under the Constitution of the state, and that I will well and faithfully perform the duties of St. Lucie County School Board on which I am now to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Know therefore this day and consider it in your heart that Yahovah, he is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath. There is no one else. Deuteronomy 4.29. This is your highest authority. Any school official who facilitates or in any way allows pornographic material into St. Lucie County schools is in violation of their oath of office, failing to obey the U.S. Constitution and the Florida Constitution. That means you. Abuse of an office is a serious matter. It is your responsibility to provide a safe school for our children. You are accountable to us. The second pillar of St. Lucie County school states, safe and caring schools. You are breaking the promises of your own published pillars by not providing safe schools for our children. I demand immediate removal of every single piece of pornographic material in every school in the county. I demand a regular review of any new material that comes into our school system to ban any future pornographic material. I am here to expose the evil darkness. If you continue to allow these pornographic books in our school system, you are part of that darkness. James 4, 7 says, to him that knows to do good and doesn't do it, to him that is sin. Jesus said to his disciples, it is impossible but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were remaining. hanged around his neck and he cast into the sea that he should offend one of these little ones. Luke 17, 2. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hall. Uh, we do have an unscheduled speaker this evening, um, Mr. A Alan Hall, I believe. Sure. Yeah, yes, sir. Come on up to the podium. Are you as a scheduled speaker? What's your? Come on up and tell me your name, ma'am. Hi, I'm Laura Barnes. I'm on the schedule. Barn. Good see. evening, Madam Chair, Board, and I Superintendent don't see your Jim. Barn here. I'm on there. Okay, Ms. Bond, go ahead. I'm on there. Good evening. I reside at 413 Northwest Stratford. Um, I don't want to be here tonight. I'm a parent. Um, I have, I'm a former teacher, and my background is in early childhood development. I hate talking about this subject. I don't think I should even be broaching this subject with you. I think this is something that should have been handled a long time ago. But that being said, I heard... Um, these people speak in September when I was here, um, and they're fighting for us parents. We work. We don't have. To, I don't have time to do this. I really don't have time tonight to do this. So, my writing is not going to be as contrite and put together, but I'm going to do my best here. So, um, that being said, I have made contact with the governor, with the lieutenant governor, um, a local representative, and I have also spoken with Clay County. Um, about this particular subject. We have 44 books in the state of Florida that are controversial. They are explicit. They have been deemed explicit. We have 22, as you know, here in St. Lucie County. Um, that being said, um, I would like to take this more on a legal perspective. I appreciate the perspective that they brought in, um, but I just want to come from a parent point of view and a legal perspective. So, 
Um, an issue that has nothing to do, this is an issue that has nothing to do with religion, race, politics, ethnicity, or gender, and everything to do with the development and protection of our children. She read Florida statute um, FS847012, which again um, can re hold anybody responsible that approved and has signed off on this. As a matter of fact, currently in Texas, the governor um, has called an audit of all school library books and the persecution of those school employers who allow underage student access to them. We know in Florida is soon to follow suit. I will be spending several weeks in Tallahassee with my daughter who serves in the Capitol in the spring, so that is definitely a subject that um, will be discussed. Um, so my question to you is why would we even risk having these books here in any of our libraries? Why? Um, these books don't belong in school libraries. They don't belong in the hands of students. Um, in today's world, if, anyone, if any of these students and their parents allowed it and they wanted access to these books, they can get it. It's online. Everything, we have access to everything online. So if they really want these books, if, they re if the parent approves of this, they can get it, so it shouldn't even be an issue. If our county libraries are saying that these books are inappropriate and they're not even carrying them, why on earth would we as a school district do that? It doesn't make sense. Um, so they have access anywhere that they want um, for free. Um, so why again would we allow any controversial content that would, could ultimately be held accountable for. I mean, it's to the detriment of children, so why would you want that on your hands? I, I just don't think it, it doesn't make sense. So let's talk about the science in this. As an early childhood development major, we know much is formed in the brain during the early childhood school years. There are thousands of studies to back up the negative effects of pornography and explicit content on children, but please hear this. This is from Dr. Daniel Amen. The CEO of your brain is the prefrontal cortex. It is the top front portion of your brain, and though it may be smaller in size, it runs the show. It is responsible for good decision making, impulse control, planning, and other complex functions befitting its executive position. It's not fully formed until the age of 25. On the brain scans done on a porn addict, the prefrontal cortex looks diminished, much like a deflated tire. Actually, he even showed in his research, he's a neuroscientist, he even showed in his research that a um, heroin addict has more brain development than a porn addict, which is huge. By watching porn, this person has bypassed the prefrontal cortex many times to go straight to the feeling good part, which is why they call it the gateway drug. So my, and I've read article after article trying to make sure I was up and up on this before I came here tonight. Um, I'm asking that this is solved, that these books are removed by, Jan by the end of January. If they are not, I have sought legal counsel and I will do whatever I need to do to ensure that our students do not have access to this. So I really don't wanna do this. I don't 15 like 15 seconds remain. I see, thank you. Um, I really appreciate what you guys do, but let's, let's protect our children from this. It's not anything that we should even be speaking on. So I thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Bonds. Okay, so we're going to now uh, come to the end of our meeting. I wanna say happy holidays to everyone, to all and good, uh, good night as they say. Enjoy your much needed rest. Take care, good night. Meeting adjourned.